So welcome to the LHC Tunnel. Um, the Hadron Collider exhibition includes a recreation of the great big tunnel that the whole collider system goes through. Um, so the the, in real life the whole thing is 27 kilometres. The reason you have such a big tunnel is that you need a big circle to keep the particles going around inside their magnetic fields. Inside these blue tubes with their cooling system are the LHC magnets themselves. And those magnet systems actually contain two beam pipes, not one. So although we talk about the LHC beam going around, it's actually two counter-rotating beams. And then at four points inside the detectors, they're brought into collision. So you can see on this slice through of what an LHC magnet looks like, the two beam pipes. And the forces that would want to pull these beam pipes apart when the collider is running are very, very strong. So you have a huge big iron yoke system around it to try and keep it all together. So there are four detectors around the LHC ring, Atlas, CMS, ALICE and LHCB, and the two biggest ones are Atlas and CMS, and they are multi-purpose detectors. They're designed to do quite a wide range of physics, um, amongst which was looking for the Higgs boson. They are designed in different ways, and there's a very good reason for that, because these are the two most powerful detectors on the most powerful accelerator in the world. There are no other machines with the capabilities of what these two detectors can do, so they had to be designed to look for the same sort of thing, but designed in completely different ways, so that they could cross-check each other's results. This is a schematic of CMS, the second biggest detector on the LHC ring. The particles go around the LHC beam line, indicated here by the thick yellow bar, and then inside the four detectors, the particles collide, and they collide at the very center of the detectors. So Atlas and CMS are designed a bit like an onion skin. So there are different layers inside, and each layer is designed to do something ever so slightly different to tell us what the particles are doing. Each layer is made of different kinds of materials and uses different kinds of technologies that we can use to measure the characteristics of each different kind of particle. In the inner layers, typically, you'll see particles like photons and electrons being stopped and measured. As we go further out, we'll see bigger particles like hadrons, so protons and neutrons will be measured. And then some particles tend to just go right through, so particles called muons just tend to not interact with any of the inner layers of the detector. So despite all this talk about the LHC and this amazing engineering and this amazing complex in CERN, most of the work actually happens at computer terminals around the world. The detectors create enormous amounts of data coming from each collision. Then the stuff that is likely to be more interesting is processed through CERN's computing farms and parceled around the world, and that's analysed by physicists, um, so at CERN and also at all of CERN's partner universities. But you will never see something like a Higgs boson. You can't see these particles, so all you can see is the statistical evidence they were once there. So the physicists will write different kinds of computing code to, t to look for what their theory predicts. And if we see enough of the same evidence enough times around the world, then we have statistical evidence that that theory prediction has been found. So we've gone from 1897 to an experiment that could be done by two people working at a lab bench to 27 kilometres worth of equipment and 10,000 people around the world. So things have just scaled up beyond all imagination. Thomson really didn't think the electron was going to be much use for anything at all. Um, and of course now modern electronics underpins almost every aspect of our lives. We don't yet know what the LHC is useful for, but maybe in 100 years time people will be talking about it in the same kind of way.